Exercise two. What we have is a need to invoke a reactive sources. So we had stream sources, which were a bunch of streams that we would we would get for use in our in our testing. What we have here is reactive sources. Okay, so here's how this works. You have a bunch of streams which are reactive. You don't need to know what these are. I'll tell you. So you hear, you see these names, Flux, Mono. You don't need to know what these are, right? You can work with Reactive without even knowing those. I'll tell you all how that works. I'm going to go to exercise two. So here is a stream, which is int numbers Flux. Here's another stream, which is users Flux. Okay, Flux is one of the streams that we're going to learn about today. But basically... The first exercise is to print all the numbers in the int numbers flux. So first I'm going to get the streams. Reactive sources dot int numbers flux stream, right? This is going to give me a stream. What type it is, hold on to that thought. But now I need to do, I need to print all the numbers. So I'm going to need to do a, a for each kind of. So the equivalent of for each in the reactive world is something called subscribe. Okay, you have a subscribe, and then I'm going to get the element. And for each element, I'm going to do system.out.println of that element. Okay, so this is a way for me to get all the numbers in the stream and then subscribe to it. Like basically, I'm saying whenever this stream emits something, I want to run a piece of code, okay? So here I'm not saying go fetch all the elements and run this for each, right? Keep finding it, keep saying next, next, find all, pull all the elements and run it for each. What I'm doing over here is saying, whenever that runs, whenever I get a new number from the stream, this is the method for you to run. I'm gonna give it to you. Whenever that event ha happens, whenever the number is emitted, go run this thing. Okay, that's what it means. Now, I'm going to do something interesting. So you notice here, there are a couple of lines here where I'm asking somebody, the, you know, run this thing, I'm going to ask people to hit a, a button to end the program, right? Let me comment this out, I'm going to show you. Okay, run exercise two, basically says, press a key to end. So I'm going to click here and press a key, the program ends. Okay, now why have I done this? It'll become clear in a bit. Okay, so let's say I do this and I comment this out. Okay, I'm basically saying, hey, reactive source, it's a stream of events that's going to happen over a span of time. Whenever an event happens, go subscribe to this. What happens if I run this? Process finished. Does this mean that no event happened? Well, actually what it means is you told this stream to do something when an event get triggered, but then you didn't wait for the stream to do anything. Right? You basically said, run this whenever an event gets fired. And then that stream goes, okay, I got it. I'm going to watch and I'm going to run whenever the event gets fired. And then Java goes, okay, done. End of main method. So it's going to end the process. Okay, it's not sticking around. Okay, so that's the reason why I've got this thing. I have this thing which basically says, you know, just something to hold. You can do a thread dot sleep or whatever. It doesn't matter. So you're hanging around for a bit for the event to be emitted because you've told it to do something when the event gets emitted, which means you don't have to wait around when the event gets emitted. So that's the reason why this exists. Now with this thing, you've told it to do something and now it's going to wait. And you notice what's happening here. Events are gradually coming one second at a time. You notice here, eight, nine, 10, and it looks like it's ended at 10. Okay, or there are no events coming. Now I hit the key and it is going to end the process. Okay, you see what's happening? So what I've done here is I've done the same programming model as what we did for 
uh, collection streams. But now it's not just pull, 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 and when I'm done, it's all over. It's not synchronous. It's basically saying, I don't care when in time it happens. Whenever the event is emitted, I want you to run this thing. And I have coded this thing to emit a number every second. Okay, we're going to take a look at how to write those streams yourself, how to emit those events yourself. But just right now, we're just assuming that somebody is exposing a stream for us and we are subscribing it to it. Whenever an event happens, do this thing. And you can do whatever you want over here. You can just take that number and add it to something else. Like you basically subscribe allows you to say, do this thing per event. And when this event is executed, when this method is executed, is controlled by this stream, not by you. Which is why it does not happen at the same time. Okay? So there is a similar uh, thing here for user flux. I'm going to do, it's pretty, pretty much the same uh, programming model, right? So you have reactive sources dot user flux, which is a stream of user objects. And I'm going to do a dot subscribe to it. We have a user. I'm going to do a user. Well, I'm going to do a sysout of user. I believe I have a two string implementation there. And I'm going to comment this out because I don't want this to, because it's not, it's not sequential anymore, right? With sequential, it's okay if you put the system out print lens in the top because all that will print. And then what you want will print over here. If I don't comment this out, those two will get mixed. I'll show you how that looks like as well. So here I'm just getting the user stream and I'm saying for each user, just call this method whenever that stream emits a user event, All right? So I'm going to run this again. And now you see I'm getting one user object per second and I'm using that, I'm printing that, right? So this user is of type user. Okay, I don't remember if I showed you this before. So user is this this user object, which I have like a, just a bunch of properties and uh, a constructor just so that we have something of a type and not just a primitive for our examples. That's about it. Nothing special here. So this is, this was me printing all numbers in the number stream. This is me printing all the user objects in the user stream. Have you noticed what happens when I uncomment this arc? A new event is being emitted every second, right? A new number and a new user, right? So you see, now the user stream is not emitting anymore. Only really the number stream is emitting and it just keeps sending this one after another and you're able to print this thing over here. Okay, is this making sense? This should be clear now because you now know what the programming model is and you're basically passing this thing to the stream. A subscribe method is just passing a function to the stream and saying, you executed when something is there. And that is what's executing this. It's passing this thing, right? So hopefully this is making sense for you. So this was exercise two. You're welcome to give it a try. If you want to try this out or if you have been doing this all along, great. If you need a couple of minutes, please let me know in the chat and then we can proceed further. All right, I'm going to take a question here. <laughs> 